Satpati very rightly said you need to have skill and will both. But in my own experience, the last 40 years in the corporate world, uh, mostly the will is never missing, the skill is always missing. And most of the organizations are fighting for the skill only, not the will. Uh, prior to my this assignment as CEO of Power Sector Skill Council, I was director in Power Grid. And Power Grid is a one company which has, uh, uh, which has the fastest growth in the, uh, amongst all PSU. The youngest to become Maharatna in 25 years, less than 25 years. And the per person contribution would be around more than two point, uh, uh, sorry, uh, nearly five crores per person contribution. Per person profit is about 1.25 crore, nearly touching 50,000 crores of turnover. And uh, most of you will not believe that there was a time when we had 7,000 people in the company and out of that 7,000, 2,000 people were thrown on us, which was of no use to us. And that there, there came a big challenge of scaling them. And it took us four years to make them uh, deployable in the company. We trained them, retrained them, and fortunately made them perfectly fit in the organization. It took us three years, uh, three to four years. For that, we won r 2 do award for the best uh, training organization in Asia. And there, uh, what, what I'm saying is training can do magic in many organizations. People don't believe in that this can do work. Most of the organization don't spend even the required uh, money for the skilling people. And I must tell you, because after joining uh, C, uh, CEO of Power Sector Skill Council, I realized skilling is a different ball game and the corporate l and is a different uh, ball game altogether. So any organization, if you want to succeed, you need to spend, uh, number one, you need to ensure that you need to have a good uh, digital platform at place. And uh, I'm very fortunate to say that PowerGrid won for last two year ATD award for being the best training organization in the world, ranking eighth uh, or seventh in last two years. So uh, that's why we could, why we could do it because uh, uh, training was a very intrinsic part in the entire organization process. Everyone has to training. There's an inbuilt process that you get a, ch a choice of training, then you choose. And uh, it's a total digital process, totally uh, uh, nowhere uh, you need to connect to anybody. It's totally online system, digitally uh, delivered. And that is the beauty of this uh, learning system we have made. Uh, now coming to scaling, scaling is a much bigger game because uh, India in 2015 with our Honorable Prime Minister uh, mission that uh, Kushal Bharat is Kushal Bharat unless the youth of this country is not skilled, the country cannot grow, cannot grow at the same speed, we cannot be rich actually. The country has demographic dividend today, our, we have the highest, youngest young manpower in the world and if we skill them properly, I think the 20% of the global manpower would be coming from India. Already you have seen the skilling has worked in IT sector and many other sector. Presently we have 37 uh, skill council in India. Some are uh, merging, some are emerging. And uh, so skilling is a, in a big way going on by the country. There will be 40, uh, the country has a plan to train 40 crores people. So that ultimate aim is when we become uh, an old country, country, I mean, not right now, we are a people of young, young nation. So we, we become rich by that time. I mean, the country generate that much revenue that we can reap benefit later on. So the skilling uh, is a continuous affair. Government is spending big push, big money is being spent on skilling and the ultimate aim is that, and ultimate aim is that a larger population of this country is skilled. Uh, if you see other uh, developed countries, Germany, Japan, they have a skilled youth uh, percentage is about 80 to 90 percent. But India, the, the skilled youth is, uh, percentage is very low. That's why skilling initiative has been done by Indian government. And I'll not go into details of how skilling is done. Uh, skilling is somewhat different from because here most of people are from the corporate world and skilling happens at the lower level where people who are uh, eight pass, 10 pass, or not even uh, uh, do, uh, not even possess proper qualification. They are made fit for some, uh, some job where they can be made employable. And uh, India had such a system, we had a Guru Shishya Parampara where everybody uh, learned from their Guru. Uh, like even if you see a truck driver, he comes as a Kalasi, uh, slowly he uh, becomes a driver. Similarly, you see a Chotu in Dhaba and gradually he becomes uh, 
uh, a good chef in the hotel. Th that's why how Indian skilling system was there. But for a large country, we needed that. We need to recognize skills and identify them and skill them, certify them so that they become employable. For a large, uh, in a large country, we cannot go on with the old system. Like Mahabharata, uh, Satpati ji mentioned, skill and will. Similarly, we had sim uh, recently a program on specialty management. There, most of the senior level participants, they realized Arjuna never faced 9 to 5 job or he was not working in late night shift. So the present day problems are totally different. I mean, it's very difficult to draw a lesson from past. You can draw some wisdom, but actually working on them today is a totally uh, difficult uh, game altogether. So uh, I'm happy that a uh, country like India is spending a lot of money, giving a lot of push by policy so that our large number of uh, people who are in agriculture sector. So our larger revenue come from services, 60% revenue come from services organization, and the, whereas the larger population is based in agriculture sector, where uh, either it is a uh, hidden employment or they are disguised employment, or they are really not employed. Basically, we need to shift people from agriculture to other industry base so that our economy grows. Uh, that's uh, the push by the government of India. And uh, uh, so every year, a big scaling has, is taking place, and there is a properly certified mechanism. And uh, I don't know how many of you would be aware with the skill ecosystem. There is a Mr. Skill Development. NCVT is a body which certifies every, every qualification we deliver. Then there is NSDC, which, uh, which is an umbrella partner, which monitor all the skill uh, councils. And there's a big uh, training partners network all over India where, so that uh, skilling can take place in every part of India. So in that shell, I, would to, I wanted to emphasize this only. And uh, again, I will emphasize that l and plays a very important role in any organization. And any organization who is not spending 5% uh, or making sure that their employees go for training at least for a week time in a year and they plan it properly is not a good organization. Beside L&D, they need to spend on innovation also. Uh, if we see, uh, even on innovation, most of the companies are spending very little amount. The last two years, it was part of MOU also, where the um, country was monitoring how much you're spending in innovation. But most of the leading organizations spending very little on innovation also, innovation and R&D. So these are the area where uh, uh, the, all the corporate need to spend. And skilling also, all the corporate need to come forward and help some way in skilling so that Indian youth get empowered. That's all I wanted to message, I want to drive to you. Thank you, thanks a lot.